Amen. Amen. Jubilation. Jubilation. Jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation. 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 Is coming our way. Let's sing it. confession one more round of the confession and I want to advise that we are not absent minded you are declaring what you mean that is what it ought to be you are declaring what you mean not declaring and looking and thinking about our nation about your business about any other thing you are declaring wholeheartedly, heartily, what you mean. That's the way it works. Jubilation, first round, we say, come in my way. Then the second round, we say, listen. The second round, we say, to your neighbor, come in your way. And then the third round, we say, coming our way. Let's get set. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation.
an amen. An amen. Let's bow down our heads to pray. Let's bow down our heads to pray. Precious Lord in heaven, thank you because a jubilation is coming our way. Lord, jubilation is coming in the way of the individual, in the way of the entire church, of the watchman. Thank you very much because it has been ordained, it has been decided, and it cannot be withdrawn. The thing has gone out. I praise your holy name, Lord, because the word has gone out. A proclamation has gone out and cannot be withdrawn must yield the dividend. It must yield what has been declared. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Of glory because I know that it's already happening everywhere where they join. Even in the thing that we are doing this December, great Father in heaven, it cannot be otherwise the Lord has said it. And I word went out of old and never returned to thee void. Never return to the void at any point in time. Never return to the void. In the day of creation and recreation, you never return to the void. When you decided to punish Cain, the word went out and never returned to the void. Grandfather in heaven, when you decided to bless Abraham and swore by yourself, by myself as well, in blessing, I will bless you. That word went out and never returned to the void. Thank you very much. That same word has gone out today and shall not return to the void. Everywhere the sons of men are found and they hear the voice of the man of God, the word goes out and does not return to the void. It must yield and it's yielding right now. It is yielding right now, yielding, yielding the dividend, yielding the dividend, jubilation will be our lords. Thank you very much, Lord, because I know it is done. Thank you because it is done. Let the heavens hear, Lord. Let the earth hear, let the mountains hear, let the valleys hear, let the oceans hear, let the seas hear. He is the rock, his walk is perfect, all his ways are justice. A God of truth without iniquity, just and right is he. He is faithful that has promised, and all his, all his promises in Christ Jesus are yea and amen. Yeah and amen concluded. Yeah and yeah and yeah and amen. Not yeah and nay. Father, thank you very much. All the men and women that come to the meeting and expectant, precious Father, they shall never be the same again. They shall never be the same again. They shall never be the same again. They shall not be the same again. Everywhere across the globe, they shall never be the same again. Wherever they are and hearing the voice of the man of God, they shall never be the same again. They shall never be the same again. Their circumstances shall never be the same again. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, they shall send gifts and presents one to another, declaring and saying, come and see what the Lord has done. Come see what the Lord has done. They send gifts and presents to one another, saying, come see what the Lord has done. They shall send gifts and presents to one another, saying, come and see what the Lord of Sabaoth has done. Thank you, Lord of glory. Thank you, Lord of glory. Thank you, Lord of glory. 
All the problems of this life that have afflicted you and people are in trouble. Give trouble to trouble. Give trouble to trouble. Give trouble to trouble. Give their trouble to trouble. Give your trouble to troubles. Give your trouble to troubles. Give your trouble to troubles. Oh Lord of heaven, say that, oh Lord of heaven. Oh Lord of heaven. I want you to say, oh Lord of heaven. Give your trouble to troubles. Trouble the troubles. You can go ahead. You can go ahead and the Lord has trouble. He has trouble in his storehouse. He can deliver, he can deliver trouble at the door out of the trouble. Trouble the troubles of my life. Trouble them. Trouble them. Afflict them. Slay them. Slay the friends that want to slay me. Slay the sicknesses that want to slay me. Slay the audience that want to stay, slay me. Give your poison to poisons. Give your poison to poisons. Lord, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord of glory. Hallelujah. 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 I am ready to obey your word. I am ready to obey your word. I am ready to obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey your word. Sing it now. I am ready to receive your word, my Lord. I am ready to receive the living word of God. I am ready to receive your word. Are you ready? I am ready to receive your word. I am ready to receive your word.
invite you to turn to your songbook, to the song that we have written in number 187, Obedience Brings a Blessing. And our dad say, Obedience Still Brings a Blessing. One. It's seven. One hundred and eighty-seven. Obedience still brings a blessing. Sometimes it seems so very hard to do what God is asking. It comes across the grain of selfish pride. But when we give are all to him without a reservation. He brings such peace and joy down deep inside. Then Jonah heard the voice of God say, Be my missionary. He thought there was no way he could obey, but when his disobedience caused him loss of pain and trouble, he found it was not hard to go God's way. Don't let your life become so crowded with the task of living that you have no time left to seek the Lord. Don't let him have to slow you down to get his message to you. Obedience always brings his own reward. Obedience brings a blessing. Obedience brings a blessing. It always works. It never fails. I have found just daring to step out upon the promises of Jesus will always work. He never fails to bring the blessing down.
blessings down, Lord. And so, great Father in heaven, as we settle down to listen to this welcome exhortation, eternal rock of ages, may it yield the desired and stipulated dividend in every person's life without fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much because we know that it is done. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may now be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you formally, every one of you that is uh, seated out there in the Rock Chapel or wherever you are in this time of uh, a great convocation. Welcome you very heartily to the December 2023 retreat of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. The theme is Restoration, Jubilation, and Praise have been determined. Restoration, jubilation, and praise determine. I want to read you, every one of you, pay attention very well wherever you are. My welcome address. My welcome address is uh, an exhortation. And so we'll be going to some scriptures. So you need to lend me your ears. I want to inform that you are here to be part of an epoch-making gathering this December. Epoch-making means something that has a very important effect on people's lives and on history. This December meeting is going to have a very important effect on your life. And on my life. And in the history of the watchman. That's why it is titled A Push Making Gathering. I want you to mark the words of my words and the words of all the people that come to minister. You have been told who they are, and you have to consider them as such. And when you do, when you do, you will not miss what has been declared. God is not a man. His ways are straightforward. God is not somebody that is partial in his doings with human beings. What do I mean? In times past, he was faithful. In the present day, he refuses to be faithful. That would be seen. And God cannot be associated with any unrighteousness. If you respond the way they responded of old, what happened to them of old must happen to you today. So the gathering once more is a push making. Because it it has a very great effect, very important effect in the lives of the people that will pass through it and in the life of the ministry, in the history of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Now, and the gatherings unto the Lord. Turn with me quickly to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49.
and I'm reading verse 9 and verse 10. Genesis 49 verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prayer, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter, that is sign of rulership, rulership, symbol of rulership, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, from his loins, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh was a place where they gathered of old to worship the Lord. You remember the case of Hannah and the husband. They went to Shiloh from year to year. But now he's referring to Shiloh as him. You cannot refer to a house of God as him. So he's talking about somebody, and that is Jesus Christ. Now he said, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So I want to inform every one of you that is here and that is in the diaspora, everywhere where you are found, in the villages of Nigeria, of Africa, and the townships, the metropolis, and so on and so forth. And we have gathered unto the Lord. That is it. We have gathered unto the Lord that you must see it as such. What does that mean? You come to the camp. The camp God has ordained. And then you are coming to seek him. You have come to embrace him. You have come to get something from him. You have come to know him the more. You have come to relate with him. In a special way, we'll be relating with him wherever you are, but we're now gathered together for some definite things to happen in our life. That is a way everybody that is in attendance must behave. As was announced earlier, God has determined restoration that must precede the translation and has also determined jubilation of his people in the camps, in the camps of the worshiper, and then praise unto him as a result of the things that he has scheduled, he has uh, arranged to let go, things that have been put in the pipeline, and they will now move out item by item for grabs. Take note of the thing that I am saying. Now, when it is said that something is determined, it simply means it has been non-negotiably, non-negotiably decided. Non-negotiably decided non-negotiably decided and nothing will make it not be the way it has been decided. I want to give you an illustration with what happened to me in 1979. Is anybody listening to me? I was having a very nice employment, juicy employment, having company, car and driver, 1979. But the Lord said to me, leave that employment and return to where you were in Lagos. And I knew I heard the voice of the Lord. And then I resigned that employment back in the eastern part of Nigeria, Enugu precisely. And now some person, some foreigner, who was a second in command in a particular place of work in a consultant's office. Now, on knowing that I had resigned, took interest in me because we had met on site, a site meeting from time to time. Is anybody listening to my story? Is anybody listening to my story? I want to show 
when something is determined, what it means. Now, and they called me on phone and said, Aloysius, I heard that you have resigned. I want you to drive to my office. There is something I want to tell you. At close of work, I drove to the man's office. And then I entered his office. He said, Aloysius, I want to work with you in this place, in this consultant's office. And I looked him eyeball to eyeball straight into his face and called his first name and said, my returning to Lagos was non-negotiable. That means there was not any amount of money, no amount of good, fantastic fringe benefits that would make me not return to Lagos. My returning to Lagos, I've been non-negotiably decided. And that's what happened. And the man looked back to me and said, Aloysius, I'm ashamed. And didn't say any other word, and I walked out. That is the meaning of something decided. That is the meaning of something that has been determined. That is the way you will see what we are talking about. Restoration of the church that will lead to the translation has been decided, determined, non-negotiably decided, non-negotiably packaged. Nothing can withdraw it. Nothing under the sun can withdraw it. No activities of the kingdom of darkness can withdraw it. No situation in the world can withdraw it. So, and now, jubilation has also been determined. Jubilation of the people of God. I am not the person that said it. I am not the person that coined out the word. I am not the person that coined out the song. It came spontaneously one of the times. Jubilation is coming your way. Jubilation is coming my way. Jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation and praise. That's what have been non-negotiably decided. And then, the gathering we are into is just one of the activities and the instrument by which this goal, this goal that I have announced and expatiated on will be realized. And for this particular gathering we are into this December, to achieve its allotted portion of the overall goal, listen to me, this particular gathering this December has an allotted portion of the, of the overall goal, allotted portion, that is a percentage of uh, the goal has been allotted to this particular December meeting. God is the one that did the allotment. Is there any person listening to me? I want a response. Is anybody listening to me? And now, because of that, he now has uh, mobilized, mobilized uh, and made ready his change agents. Listen to me. God has mobilized and made ready. If you want to understand the word mobilization, you would take a look to the construction company that has gotten a contract, are you there, to build a highway, roadway, to build a skyscraper, to build an estate construction company, and now they are mobilized all their machinery, their dumpers, their concrete mixers, their trucks and everything, and will go and station them at the site mobilization. They have mobilized every equipment and then put them on site. 
and I've mobilized even money and put and mobilize also personnel and get them and get them get them ready for the project to start. So in likewise, the Lord has mobilized his change agents. And I am not kidding here. You have seen how the meeting began, the type of prayer that was prayed. I am not kidding here. Is anybody listening to me? If anybody watched when I came in, you saw that I was praying, I was dancing, I was jubilating because of something that I know that must happen. Did you notice that? And while I was sitting down there at a point, the song that was sung, song, Go With Me, was given to me and I told, I called the music director to come and sing that song. And after that song, oh, praise God. And why they were singing that song? You know, God gave me messages to give to the people. You should be people that are excited with what you hear. Is anybody listening to me? I am not kidding here. And the Lord gave me a message. And the message is uh, something that is somehow 50 years of foolishness. 50 years of foolishness. <laughs> 50 years of foolishness. kind of message is this? <laughs> Here, I wrote it down. Go and tell the people about your 50 years of foolishness. You are amazed. When we come back, 50 years of foolishness. While I was rejoicing, gave me another message. Why the marriages fail? Why the marriages fail? Marriages have fallen apart. Why? Just here. Now, come back to what we're saying. Now, you have to be very attentive in what you are hearing. Because that is what we guarantee what you are looking for. What you are looking for is guaranteed. Are you there? Yes, sir. I said, you have been looking for, you are, you are, you are saying, five brothers finished the man. Oh, they booked me for surgery, this and that. Now, my friend, who told you? But God, in a twinkling of an eye, Fiam, who told you? Who told you? Bim. One of our pastors told me a testimony. He said, my wife had a broken arm, completely broken. Only flesh, only flesh was holding this part to this part. Are you hearing that? That person is here. And then they went to teaching hospital. And they said they don't have, uh, they are not ready for the surgery. They said this and that, that they are making ready. And then months passed. And then they were making ready. Then one of the days, the woman came to the church. And then they said, somebody to read some chapters of scriptures. And then the person, the woman came and began to read, the wife of the pastor, and read and read. That's what he said. And then the next month, they had, boom. Did you hear me? Bim. Come, where are you? Is you know what you told me? Is it not what you told me? Is it true? Arm broken. That is only flesh holding this side to this side. Quim.
Are you there? Now, when we finish, if you want to know what God can do, eh, I want you to walk to, the, to that gate. Eh? I want you to walk to that gate and beyond the gate, a little distance from here to there, you will see an ant hill. You know what an ant hill is? Yes, eh? yes, you know an ant hill? Yes, you go there, you see how they are building. Let me ask you, the ant, is he as big as your eye? No. The ant, is it as big as your finger? But I want you to do something. When you go there, you use a stick and then chop off the top of the pinnacle. Eh? That thing that is protruding. Cut it off and go away. By the time we, well, by the time we close the meeting, go there. They have rebuilt it. Did you hear me? I am asking who gave brain to something that is as tiny as the, as the strand in your hair. So that person cannot work on human being. Let me ask you, that and heal, is it a house of God? Does God live in the ant hill? Do we worship God there? And then he gave the ants that intelligence, the little ant having brain and communally to do that kind of work. Who is telling me that that same God cannot do something in our midst? Is there anybody following me? And so... You have come, you have come for the time of uh, a beginning of beginnings. Great beginning of great things to come. So, now, he has mobilized. That was the point I was making. He has changed agents. And then, part of his change agents are Hearts of his non-terrestrial servants from among his innumerable company of angels. Somebody turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Matthew, chapter 26. And we're going to read from verse 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and stayed from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Where are you coming from? Then came there and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all there that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels to defend me? Listen to me. What was Jesus Christ saying? He was asserting that if it was not for the purpose of scriptures concerning him to be fulfilled, that he would call upon God and God will send him more than 12 legions of angels to defend him, to fight the people. Showing us that Jesus, showing us that the angels are people, non-terrestrial beings that God can send in defense of his people. That God can send to minister to his people. 
that God can send to minister to his people in the midst of the camp. Is anybody listening to me? Is anybody listening to me? Now, the fact that some people abuse angelic ministration and then call down demons, some people that wear garments and burn incense and candles, abuse the ministration of angels and call demons to themselves, does not mean that God cannot send angels into the midst of the people. Can I give you a testimony? There is uh, this lady. That lady works in this school when she was 13, 14 or thereabout. She gave her life to Jesus and was vibrant. And this is her testimony. Some young men were trailing her and they went and led her on a bush path in the village. Is anybody listening to me? And as she was walking on that path, 14 year old, 16 year old, the people ambushed her. But as she was coming, ignorantly, didn't know that the people had ambushed her, was going, and now suddenly she saw that some young men just dashed out from the bush and took to their heels and ran. Only after that, they came asking her, who are those men, those men with you? Who are those great people with you that we saw that terrified us? Is anybody listening to me? If I can get her around, by in the course of the meeting, I, I bring her to testify. Now, but she didn't know that the angels were following her. Are you there? So, the fact that some people abuse ministry of the angels and they call upon angels and do things that are nasty and sacrifice unto demons and then the demons now come into their midst does not negate the fact that God can send his non-terrestrial servants to minister to his uh, terrestrial servants. That is what is written in Hebrews chapter 1, and we read verses 12, 13, and 14. Hebrews chapter 1. And if I call the scriptures, you go there without wasting time. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. We're reading verses 13 and 14 but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thee thine enemies thy first two the one showing what he said unto Jesus now but verse 14 says are there these angels are uh, there not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? Let me ask you, are we heirs of salvation? Answer me, are we heirs of salvation? And then here we are told that there are ministering spirits that have been sent forth to minister to us. Minister to us means serve us protection, serve us information as the case may be. Was it not an angel that was sent to Zacharias? Was it not an angel that was sent to Mary? Was it not an angel that was sent to the people that was sent to Jacob? And so, in this camp, wherever you find yourself, the non-terrestrial, non-terrestrial servants of God, the angels, a detachment of non-terrestrial servants of God, have been detached and been mobilized to minister to the people. This is true. If you believe, you say, I believe. If you accept, you say, I accept. Now, apart from his non terrestrial servants that have been mobilized, we have 
his unfailing executors of his mind, the unfailing executors of God's mind, the unfailing executors of God's mind, that is, those persons, those instruments that execute his mind. The instruments, the agents that execute God's mind. See, agents that execute God's mind. Two agents, two principal agents. His word and his spirit. That the principal agents that execute God's mind. That is what he wants. What is this in his mind? These two principal agents execute it. Now, you want to know in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was summary. He gave the summary from verse 1. The summary of what happened. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It, that is, that's the summary, not the details. Then he went to details. Now showed what happened, how the earth was. And the earth was without form and void, was shapeless. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That is, the whole of this vault, the first heaven, atmospheric heaven, and on and on and on, filled with mist and with darkness. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, all around. So that, that world was inside the deep of misty waters. And then darkness enveloped it. And there was need for recreation. That was need for rearrangement. And the Spirit of God, the second principal agent that does his mind, now hovered, waiting for the word. And then he said, The Lord now said, Let that be. That's the word. And then a combination of the word and the Spirit. Yielded the dividend. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? The unfailing executors of God's mind, the spirit and the word are here. They are in the camp. The Spirit of God is in the camp. Can I ask, is there anybody among us that has some assurance that he has some measure of the Spirit of God inside him or her? Raise your hand. Well, you have a measure of the Spirit that does the execution. And now apart from, apart from the non-terrestrial agents, we have uh, these two principal uh, non-failing uh, non uh, instruments that execute his mind. Then we have his uh, uh, terrestrial servants. Hallelujah. His human agents. And one of his human agents is uh, the apostle of the end time project. That's the man speaking with you, wherever you are. This man, look this way. Look this way, wherever you are. The person that's speaking with you is an apostle of the end time project. One of the apostles of the end time project. <laughs> Listen to me. Did you hear what I said? A person that you are looking at is a chieftain among the apostles of the end time project. What did I say? It's a chieftain. 
Say chief. Among the chiefs, listen, a chief, a chief ten, among the chief tens of the God's end time project. If you don't believe it, you have a problem. If you don't believe it, you shouldn't be in the watchman. If you don't believe it, you shouldn't be in the church. If you don't believe it, now you go bankrupt. Because the thing that come from the man will not hit you, will not come to you. Because you don't believe. What think he? The people that saw Jesus as that fellow. What happened to them? That madman. What happened to them? That possessed man. What happened to them? Now the people that saw him as the son of God, the Messiah, what happened to them? <laughs> no, what happened to the people? Praise God. <laughs> apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, if I be not an apostle to the Jamaicans, <laughs> I'm an apostle to you Corinthians. And who could argue that and be right? So, he is human agents, apostle of the end time project, and then the people that are ministering to you. You have already been told that we are what? Stewards of the mysteries and the plain things of the kingdom. See, it is what you believe that will determine what will happen to you. There are stewards. Stewards are people that serve something. Stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom and the plain things of the kingdom. I am a chief steward, and these ones are stewards. If you see them in that perspective, then you are in for jubilation. You are in for things that will make jubilation erupt. Because that is who they are. In Matthew chapter 13, we want to read to confirm. After that, we read 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And then I move forward. Around of my, my welcome exhortation. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 10. Matthew 13, 10. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? The question was to Jesus our Lord. Verse 11, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Listen to me. Given to the apostles, given to the ministers. And in Ephesians, while the Lord Jesus Christ was ascending into heaven, he, gave, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And to some he gave apostles and others, evangelists and prophets, others prophets, other evangelists, and pastors and teachers and all these people that he gave the apostle they are stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom which thing he had said earlier in verse 11 he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you unto you the apostles unto you the close associates to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. When I was doing a review with the people ministering to you, I just brought one piece of mystery that we had in the recent past. Sometimes what happens is that our people 
forget too readily. If you will turn to be a person who does not forget too readily, who remembers the things that have been said in times past and puts your mind into them and cogitates on them and meditates on them, you will be a special person in the midst of the people. During coronavirus pandemic, you heard the message that says that God told me to tell the people, and it was stated that the coronavirus pandemic was allowed as a taunting instrument. Did you hear that? And after that, you will have taunted them taunted football stadiums having 75,000, 80,000 people shouting themselves who us boxing rings lawn tennis and so on and so forth all the places of concourse in the dance halls all the night August in all the arenas he taunted them with coronavirus pandemic and everybody went home are you there football stadiums in those days now 22 people playing they will be playing there will be nobody on the stands and then they would go and borrow noise that was recorded from March of 1995. Are you there? And then, whoa, 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 whoa. But nobody was there. And then he was telling to the people, you worship football. Now I have brought the thing that will sack all of you from the stadium. And I told you that after the taunting, the thing will fizzle away. Did you hear about coronavirus anymore? When you see it, you nose mask. Mystery of the kingdom. Mystery of the kingdom. God gave the revelation. Are you there? And so, we are, we are stewards. The steward is a person that serves the thing in a party. Am I right? In a wedding or whatever, in a burial ceremony. The stewards come to serve whatever. They know where the thing is. They go and get it and serve. So all the people that are ministering to you, they were particularly and they were specially ordained, those people. So when they come out here, don't joke with them. You eat the word they give out. If you eat it, a word will germinate something. We create something inside your life. Let somebody say amen. amen. So, The next thing that you need to hear is as follows. Note that it is while these agents are at work, are you there? That that which has been determined by God will come into full manifestation. And uh, this gathering, I want somebody to say this gathering. I want somebody to say this gathering has been loaded with all manners of biblical experiences. This gathering, say it. 
has been loaded with all manners of biblical experiences. Yes. I give you to understand. I have the pleasure to announce that to you. That this period has been loaded with all manners, all manners of biblical experiences. All manners means all manners of biblical experiences. We are going to prove that every line of scripture is true to the letter and works wonders. I am going to minister lines of scriptures. Lines of scriptures. We take a line and minister and serve that line. Take another line and serve that line. And let us see what happens. Let's see what happens. All manners of biblical experiences. What is somebody going to tell me? So he went to tell me that Jesus Christ, having been countered by Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene was freed from demons. And now somebody comes around today in this last day, in the day of a jubilation, in the day that he has announced and pro programmed the jubilation, and now that person will come with those demons and go with those demons. It's impossible, my friend. I say it is impossible. Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forever. He is not a partial person. I can assure you that. He's not partial. I am sure of what I'm talking about. You tell me that uh, diabetes uh, will kill you. Diabetes, my foot. Cancer, my foot. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Cancer, they say, is a Cells, cells, multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. He that made the ant, ants to build the ant here with the brain. Ant is not up to my finger. Ant is one over 1,000 of my finger in size. That's brain. Where is the brain? The head is too small. That person is not able to stop the growth of cells. It's not able. It's not able. I say it's much more able. Now, people are going to jubilation is going to erupt like a volcanic eruption. Look, I am not just exciting you. I'm telling you what will happen. I am telling you, mark my lips and read my face. I'm not kidding here. Over the period I've been talking to God, I am not kidding here. I am not kidding here. I am not kidding here. And I am not joking here. Read my face. Am I smiling? Am I laughing? I am telling you things that must be. Anybody Anybody that has come, and you come to this meeting, and then you agree with what you are hearing, but every manner of a biblical experience. How can I minister salvation, for instance? How can I minister genuine regeneration experience, and it will not take place? How can I minister it, and it will not take place? will not take place because I don't understand what it is. How will it not take place? Is it because I don't understand what it is? Or I cannot present it appropriately? That we be, that we be every manner of uh, biblical experience. Genuine, genuine regeneration experience. Sanctification, purification. Listen to me. 
That thing that happened to Isaiah will happen to people. Listen. That thing that happened to Isaiah will happen to people. I have a number. Listen to me, you people here. I have a number of experiences that were given to me as samples. Number one is a Ezago experience. That's where it began. 1975, when my foolishness, 50 years foolishness began. <laughs> Ezago experience. No, dockyard experience. There, you are right. Dockyard experience. Then, G Kappa experience. Ido experience. Then, Enugu, Risha Street experience. I came back to Lagos. Then, K2 experience. From K2, I moved to Ijesha. Ijesha experience. I will explain those experiences. Are you there? And then there is one that happened at Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv experience. I will explain those things. All those people, the experiences are too much. The experiences are too much. How can, can, can I minister a regeneration experience and it didn't take place? Now, I can count a number of those people that have followed me who are born again. I remember one, just finished at St. Paul's. He said, I want to be born again. I said, follow me. And he followed me to Kit. Is anybody listening to me? And then I made food. I was a bachelor. And we ate. In the morning, we came for devotion. I said, you are not going to be born again now in this parlor. Look at what you're going to do. Look at what you're going to do. And if you do it, you get born again, regenerated now. And it got regenerated in my parlor. Now, I was asking her. She's not one of them, but there are two young people, young women, 20 years old. Listen to me, 20 years old, 19 years old. And uh, they finished mass at St. Paul's. And they came to me, brother, want to be born again. Oh, yeah, follow me. They followed me. I opened the back door of my car. And they entered there. I became their driver. And drove them to some brother's house. Three brothers living in a, a mini flat in the parlor. This morning, through afternoon, got to be born again here in this parlor. And I showed it and they prayed and became born again. Why will that not happen? Why will that not happen? Why will it not happen? Why will it not happen? The day I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, listen to me, somebody ministered, and that person was saying, what minute this? The question the people asked when the people began to speak in tongues. And then the people were asking, what is this kind of thing? What minute this? And then that's the I preaching that the topic, what minute this? And then he explained it and explained it and explained it. And at the corner where I was, I was nodding my head and eating the something, shopping it. At the end of the day, I knelt down and then come and see what happened. What happened? I began to sweat and began to, uh, to, to pray and, and speak in tongues until the meeting ended and I didn't know the meeting had ended. Nobody was in the hall. I was still praying. And somebody returned from outside and came to where I was and tapped me up. The meeting has closed. Why will it not happen again? God has gone on holiday. God has forgotten the church. He has taken his spirit away. Every manner of biblical experience. The healings that we have received. The healings that I have experienced and people have experienced. We we'll talk about them 
and that God who is faithful, who was faithful in 1975, in 1939, in 1940, there were people that were born again in 1940, 1950, I was born again in 1975. That God who was faithful, who did it in 1939, 1920, 1917, we do it in 2023. Yeah. Every manner of biblical experience, the healings will be there. Every manner of biblical experience, the film, the deliverances, the salvation, the sanctification will be there. Listen to me. Get ready. Somebody is saying, I have been struck with uh, glaucoma. Glaucoma. I've been struck with glaucoma, so, so I don't see. Who told you? Now, let me ask you. All those people that Jesus Christ healed, some of them were completely blind by glaucoma. Abi? Yes. They were completely blind. So, Jesus has gone on holiday. He has abandoned the church. He has abandoned the church. Now, these people need to think. You, he has abandoned the church. He has abandoned us. He has abandoned the church. After that, he has said, Upon this rock of your confession, I will build Joseph Chike's church. Aloysius church. Gideon church. Raymond church. I will build what? My church. And the gate of hell, that is all the power of darkness, shall not prevail against it. My friend, you should begin to you should begin to say, I am there already. I am there already. My jubilation is with me already. Everywhere you should begin to say, my jubilation is with me already. I'm there already. Now the question is, what will you now do? Seeing that this is a situation, what is it that is expected of us? Pay attention. I will not come down again so that I will release you to go. What then is expected of every participant who is a prospective beneficiary of the incredible goodies from heaven already in the pipeline, ready to fall out for grabs? This is what you must do. Somebody said, tell me. Somebody said, tell me. I tell you. Open to Exodus chapter 19. So I can use that place to tell you what you must do. Exodus chapter 19. We are reading from verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready again the third day for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all people upon Mount Sinai and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about saying take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of feet whosoever touches the, the mount shall be surely put to death there shall not an hand touch it, but ye shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Listen to me. You told me to tell you what you should do. And I tell you, and this is it, sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. Sanctify yourself. What is the meaning of sanctify yourself? Deliberately set yourself apart in your mind. 
consciously, deliberately, set yourself apart in the mind. You are saying to yourself, I am in the camp. I came to meet with the Lord. I came to be ministered to by a segment, a detachment of the innumerable company of angels. And they are in this camp. I believe the word that has been spoken, the truth has been spoken. I came to be ministered to by the unfailing executors of God's mind, the spirit of God, and the word of God. I came to be ministered to by the terrestrial servants of the Lord, the apostle of the end time project, and all his other ministers who all together are stewards of the mysteries and plantings of the kingdom. So I get myself ready. I am not here for nonsensical talk talk. I am not here for rigmaroling. I am not here for loitering. I am not here for talk talk. I remove obstacles and hindrances and distractions. I am here expectant. I am here expectant. Jubilation must erupt. Every manner of experience that we found written in the scriptures, I've been told, must be acquired, must be are available, is available. And I must get my own. I must get my own. By the time they begin to minister, even lines of scripture that cannot be broken, I must uh, tune in, I must get my own. God is not partial. God is alive. God that gave brain to the ants to do what they are doing. That same God is concerned about me. I am not going to rigmarole. I am not going to be just as usual, talking and phoning. I'm not kidding here. I come back again to you. This is not a place of you pull your phone from your pocket, pull it from your bag. When we finish, you open. Cho -cho 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 -cho. You are shutting. You are Instagramming. You are TikToking. You are browsing. You are Facebooking. And you Facebook everything away. Shut everything away. TikTok everything away. Everything that should build up in your mind was removed, was dissolved by the reckless activity of the person that does not know his left from his right and calls himself a Christian and remains barren. In 1979, I went to a fellowship that fellowship was not a big house like this. It was a primary school. At one Enugu. And it was a Sunday service. And the pastor said, I am talking to you people this day on Matthew chapter 6. Why worry yourself? Are you not better than the ravens? Are you not better than the base of the air? Jesus Christ said, they do not toil. They do not have bands. They do not plant. The heavenly Father feeds them. And none of them can fall to the ground by a catapult shooter unless the Lord accepts it. The hairs of your head are numbered. Are you not better than the best? Are you not better than the lilies? That's what the pastor was saying. And when he finished, I had a matter, serious matter. At that time, Enugu was an old, ancient, cold city. There was nothing like independent layout at that time. All the places that have been built up right now were not built up. You had all those ancient buildings. And I was looking for accommodation. 
and the problem was who is going to pack up from a particular place so that the place can be open because there are no new buildings. That was the situation I found myself. And somebody came telling me, you're looking for accommodation, but there is no, Enugu is tight. And Enugu was tight. But behold, we were in this fellowship. And when we finished, as is usual, people go out. There were no phones at that time, no cell phones. They are gathered in clusters, in twos and in threes. And exchanging banters and talking and talking. But I said, I have a need in my life. I have a need in my life. I need accommodation. I went to the corner by the window where I sat. And I stayed there. And I began to say, but I am better than the best of the air. I am better than the ravens. I'm better. I'm better. Now God takes care. Why will you not take care of me? As I was thinking and thinking and thinking, I came to a point, I said, I will not worry myself anymore about this thing. I'm going to get accommodation. You know what happened? After meditating, praying, people were exchanging banters and greetings, pleasantries, talking, talks everything away. And then, but everything was now talked into my heart. And faith had now germinated and then grown in my heart. And I, I moved away. I didn't talk to anybody. Are you there? I didn't talk to anybody. Did you take note that one prophet, one prophet, I think Elisha, he gave his staff unto his servant. And he said, go lay it on somebody. Don't answer any greeting. If somebody says, how are you? If somebody says, where are you going? Don't say A or B. Be serious-minded, be focused. Now, that person did not achieve anything because uh, he was not having the mind of his master. But the point is... Don't answer any greeting because that is a distraction. And then, come back to me. While I was there, and then I finished, I didn't greet anybody. I went home with, in that mood. On Monday, I went to work. Tuesday, there about somebody knocked on my door. I didn't know him. He had known me as Scripture Union Fellowship, Sunday Fellowship. And there, somebody told him Aloysius was looking for accommodation. And he came there. I heard that you are looking for accommodation. Is it true? I said, yes. Will you mind living in so so place? I said, I don't mind. Will you mind living with me? I said, I don't mind. Three bedroom flat, fantastic place. The amount of money is so so. Give me half. I pay half. I gave him half. He went and brought the key and gave it to me. For the two years plus that I lived in that place, I didn't know who was the landlady. That's how the accommodation came. How come that a man rode a vehicle with a spare tire for near two years and went to Lagos? No spare tire. And went to Portacourt? No spare tire. And went to Abba? No spare tire. I went to Calabar, no spectre. I went to Etinam, no spectre. I went to the village every weekend, no spectre. And he had told the Lord, these four tires, none of them can pick a nail. How come? He was Instagramming. After talk talk, you are, you are, you open phone, and you are shouting, hello. You open phone, you are browsing, you are now an addict. Some people are addicts. Some people are addicts already to phone. Like some people are addicts to, 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 to cigarettes. 
Some people are addicts to smoking. You are now addict to food. He has tied your heart. You need deliverance. What did I say? You need deliverance. You are shutting. Every person is Instagramming and all that. And when we finish, you go and shut it away. But I give you to understand. Separate yourself, that is, sanctify yourself means switch off your phone. The plan I had was to seize all the 2,000 phones that you brought here, to, brought to, to this list. But they advised me that that was going to be difficult. That was a plan I had. That is, tag all the phones and go and build a place and put it there. But they said it's going to be difficult. That I should just talk with you. Now that I'm talking, you think I'm joking. When you finish, the only phone call that can be made is that one which heaven will say, that's okay. In the circumstance, it will mean that when we finish, you stay where you are and you are ruminating on the things that you have had. And then as the thing fills your soul, your heart, your mind, and faith is built, you walk out and walk out with your miracle. That's how it happens. You're asking me, what do I do in order to get it? I ask you, I tell you, sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. This is the time of shouting to, all, to heavens. If you want to shout, shout to the third heavens. Shout with the third heavens. If you want to phone, there is a phone, there is a line. Telephone to heaven. If you want to do Instagramming, do it to the heavens. Discipline yourself. And let us see how the Lord will not do to us, to you, the way he did to us that did those things of old. Nobody comes into this world without a trouble. I was formed in my mother's womb, Teresa Ohanebo, in October 1943. How do I know? I was pushed out from her womb, July 1944, count nine months back. That's how I know. October 1943, I didn't know where I was while in that womb, but God knew. Do you agree? Do you know when you were in your mother's womb? When you were pushed out, did you know? When you were one year, did you know? When they brought you for dedication in the church or so, did you know? You only began to know that you are in the world, maybe around four years, you began to be aware that you are in the world. But all the time that you were in the womb, all the time that you were there, by the, and the time they pushed you out, and the time of naming ceremony, and all the things that you, that you went through as child, all of them are known to the Lord. He saw you and saw your circumstances. The minutest, the one that is as small as the grain of the sand, and the one that is as big as this house. He sees everyone. For the Bible says, there is no creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That is uh, in Hebrew chapter 4. No creature. Those of you 
uh, being persecuted by your husband. He knows when your husband was born. He know, knows why. He knows why. Why the man is doing what he's doing. <clears throat> Listen to me. Something happened recently. I visited the village, my home village, my village. And I was talking to a young boy, 22 years. A relative of mine, very close relative. And I was talking and tears came down my eyes. And I fought the tears. Because I knew that if my tears fell down in that compound, the boy would die. Because of what he's into. Terrible thing that he's been into. So I, I fought my tears. I heard myself from crying. The point in time was asking him, what evil did I do to you? What evil did I do to your father? Look at what I did to your father. I, I sent your father to school. When he was sick, this is what I did. I spent a lot of money. What evil did I do? And tears wanted to fall down. And then I heard my tears. Now, when we finished, I was telling to somebody that was with me, a cousin of his, I said, this boy, something is responsible. So let us excuse him. By saying that, I didn't know that the Lord was taking notes. Let us excuse him. Something is wrong. The boy is not acting of his own volition. Some strange force is after him because of some dedication. Let us excuse him. I didn't know that God was hearing what I was saying. Guess what happened? Now, the military people came for him. And arrived. Stationed themselves there. Men rode there and there at the back and he ran away. They missed him. The second time, midnight, they came for him. And then they said, we are looking for him. We are going to get him. You know what happened? The third time they came and got him and told his mother to forget him. His end was come. But do you know what? That excuse that I gave to him, I didn't know that God saw it. That tear that I did not allow to fall to the ground, I didn't know that God saw it. And then when they took him to the camp, the commander took interest in him and returned him to the house and told his mother, this boy would be a good boy. <laughs> And began to be a father to this boy. We call him on phone to visit him, and he visit him, and he will tell the mother, "This boy will not be lost." Did you see that? Did you see what God can do just because somebody had considered something, somebody had meditated and considered something, and then let it go? How then can you sit in the house of God and hear these things? And make some consideration and say, oh, over the period I've been wasting my life, after every message, I go open phone, I am talking. Now I stop it. I meditate on what I have heard. When you have done that, God will do his own. Let me tell you the final thing and we pray shut to heaven phone to heaven browse the word of God browse the word of God Hebrews
chapter 4. We are reading verse 13. Can we read together? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 13. Let's go. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Now everything is known to him, all the problems that you came with, all the head problems, all the eye problems, all the ear problems, all the brain problems, all the stomach problems, all the throat problems, all the hip problems, all the bone problems, all the intestine problems, all the all the organ problems, the heart problem, the liver problem, all the lung problem, all the kidney problem, all the blood problem, all the cell problem. Every one of them is known and seen by the Lord. But there is something that I'm very, very, very excited about, which I want to close with. And what is it? This person that sees everything, knows everything about you, Wherever you are, wherever you are in America, in Canada, in Europe, in Asia, wherever you are, this person that knows everything about you, knows about the family setting, knows about the persecution, knows about the restlessness of your life, knows about the pursuit of the wicked one. He has said unto me in 1996, you are facing a stiff opposition. But you may be facing a, a, a stiff opposition too. Now, but somebody sees and knows. Now, but there is something interesting about the person. And what is it? He is not a passive knower. A passive knower knows your trouble and goes his way. It's unconcerned. Waiting. Oh, will come in bed. What concerns me can be your uncle, can be your nephew, can be your niece, it can be your aunt, can be anybody. And he says, What concerns me is there. If you die, you die. The fact that we are my 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 my, my sister's uh, daughter. Must I kill myself for you? He knows about your problem, but he's not concerned. He knows about the headache, the ex, but he's not concerned. There are people that know about you, but they are not concerned. They are not concerned because they have no concern. They have no mercy in their lives. Their characteristic does not contain mercy. Unlike the Lord. Did you see how that I just made a comment? This boy, because of what he was dedicated to, we should give him a chance. Let me not let tears fall down so that he dies. And then God turned something, and the people that came to carry him now became pastor. People that told the mother to forget him. The Lord cares. First Peter chapter 5. Can somebody tell me that God doesn't care? Can somebody tell me that Jesus does not care? Listen to me. He does not know that we are in the in the a wild world, in a wild, terrible world does not know that we are in a world that is infested badly with the nasty things. Jesus does not know. And, and he knows but doesn't care. He knows but doesn't care. He knows and cares. 
He knows and cares. You are what you know. Have you heard the message? You are what you know. I said you, and I repeat it, you are what you know. You know that if you do not know that he cares, you will languish and die in your problem. Because you will not do anything. Because you will not do anything. But because I know that he cares, that's the reason I'm alive. By the time I show my stupidity, 50 years in foolishness, you will see what he has brought. And the people that are wise, see what has happened to them. <laughs> 50 years of foolishness. 50 solid years of foolishness. <laughs> I will yet be foolish till 120 years. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that I am joking here, the thing that I am joking here, Moses began ministry at the age of 80. Abraham began ministry at the age of 75. 75 plus 80, you know the number. Take the average. That's where I began ministry. Moses died at the age of 120. And his eyes were not dim. Neither was his natural force a better. Abraham died at the age of 179 or what is it? One forgotten now. Put the average. Now you are saying, I want to be like you. Now you want to be like me. Follow the way that I follow. Are you there? The Lord cares. The Lord cares of you, cares about you, cares about you, cares about you. He knows everything from when you were in your mother's womb. And it's not a passive Noah. It's a Noah that cares. I want to lift you out from the dungeon. And uh, what? What? Listen to this question. What if at this point you have decided to turn your captivity as he did in Job for Job in order that jubilation can erupt? What are you going to do? Who knows whether at this time you have decided to turn your captivity as he did in the case of Job so that jubilation can erupt. I want to assure you Jubilation that has been announced is non-negotiable. You are the determinant. The, the, you are the determiner of whether it will follow you or not follow you. You are the person that will determine it. I am doing my own business now. You are going to determine it. If you follow through now, the things will happen, and it is those things that will make jubilation to erupt. You don't jubilate when you had, does somebody jubilate when he heard that his mother died? I'm asking, does somebody jubilate when he heard that his car got an accident? Does somebody jubilate when his uncle died? When do, does jubilation erupt? When good things happen. Good things are going to happen. The jubilation may erupt in the camp of the watchmen. Jubilation will erupt as a volcanic eruption. Why? The Lord has said it. And I close with Isaiah 55. You go down there, it says, The rain comes from heaven. Illustration. Showing you how the thing works. You need to pin it down. You need to say, but uh, I understand. I can understand. The rain comes from heaven and hits the ground. Although there is some measure of evaporation going into the sky, but the much, the better part of the rain entered the ground. 
and made it wet, made it moist, and made the things, the crops that have been planted to sprout out and to grow and for us to eat. And the Lord used it as an illustration. So my word goes out. The word on jubilation and praise goes out. Does not return. The way that rain goes, comes down and does not return. Yes, the dividend. So my word goes out. Let me ask you this question. When they were told, the children of Israel, those people were told, the thing is gone out. When the king decided to kill all the wise men, all the necromancers, and all the people that couldn't interpret his dream. You know that the Bible says, you are wanting to gain time. The thing is gone out. What's the meaning of the thing is gone out? You may be thinking, listen to me, you may be thinking that the thing is gone out is that the dream has escaped me. The dream, because that is what it looks like. The dream has escaped me. So show me the dream and the interpretation. That's not the meaning of the thing is gone out. The meaning of the thing is gone out is that the decree to kill you has gone out and it's irretrievable. That's the meaning. The decree to kill all of you because you cannot show me the dream, neither the interpretation is gone out and cannot be retrieved. That's the meaning of the thing is gone out. Now, if for the king, the word has gone out, to kill the necromancers. Now, God, the King of Kings, His word, jubilation, is coming the way of the watchman, has gone out. And does not return. I'm done. Who is willing to keep the rule of the game? Who is willing to keep the rule of the game? <laughs> I need to explain. I had announced to you that if you are in the watchman and you hope to make the rapture from this ministry or you hope to go to heaven when you die, you must be a child of this ministry. Did you hear me say that? And I said that it means that you must be a child of the God man. Who is the God man? You must be a child of the God man. Jesus is God man. But you must be a child of the man of God. You say shy. You preach yourself. I didn't do so. You must be a child of the man of God. Apostle Paul said, Follow me. Now, and the meaning of that. Of being a child of the man of God is that you keep the rule of the game. We kept the rule of the game. That's what he is, the dividend. What's the rule of the game? This time around, if I was told in those days, 1976, after I became born again, February 1975, we had a retreat like this, December meeting, and it was held at uh, IMT, Abaklike Road. Enugu. People came from Lagos, from Jos, from Kafanshan, from Kano, from Ebado, from Enugu, from Oweri, from Portacot, from Abaklik, all over. People that were looking for, for God, looking for truth, came there. Are you there? Yes, sir. 1977, that retreat changed the location to CKC on nature. 1977. The people came from everywhere and all landed there. Nobody was phoning. There were no phones. We were praying. We were listening to the word and praying. In 1978, the location changed to College of Technology, Lori. And I was living in Enugu. And I took a bus. 
from Enugu to Onitsha, from Onitsha to Abba, from Abba to another place, from another place to Elori. Four changes. And the people came from all the locations. They didn't go there to, to Instagram. There were no such things. No shouting, no phone. You retire in the hostel and you are praying. At the time of rest, you are sleeping. Whenever they tell you to come out, you come out. Midnight, you come out. When it was time for seminar, you go to the place. In 1980, the venue changed to a battle, and I went from Enu. <laughs> now, if you want to go to heaven from the watchman, you keep the rule of the game. That's the rule of the game. No complaints. No complaint. No complaint. That's the rule of the game. When the watchman started, the first workers meeting was in 1986 at Liberty, Liberty Hall, or comprehensive. No complaint. We'll be in the open with bamboo, fronts no complaints keep the rule of the game you will see those that were doctors and mathematicians carrying the pan of rice and serving other people that's the rule of the game <laughs> that's the rule of the game because I carry I carry I can do that today that's the rule of the game that's the rule of the game you humble yourself you see a professor oh my god you see lecturer you need like carrying bag bag pan of rice and serving somebody. And we, know, we don't know that he graduated for UNN since 1981. But today you will say, I am a lioness. I graduated from UNN. So you want me to serve other people? Poor soul you are. We graduated from UNNO in those days. Are you there? That's the rule of the game. That's the rule of the game. And in that circumstance, things happen. In the circumstance. That was the reason somebody could build faith and say, this vehicle doesn't have... <laughs> That was the foolishness I'm talking about. 50 years foolishness. 50 years of foolishness. Was it not foolishness? Pure stupidity, but the good one. Four tires. No extra tire. No, no spare tire. And you went from Enugu to Lagos. And went from Enugu to Calabar. From Enugu to Ekolansa, to Uyo, to Etina, to Portacot, to Uli, almost every weekend. And those tires did not pick nail for two years, near two years. Was it not foolishness? <laughs> 50 years of foolishness. Keep the rule of the game. Is anybody willing? Is anybody willing? Rise up. I got it. You spoke to me. I got it. There are some people in their poverty. You know what they do? They are, they are observing observing the receptivity, the reception, receptivity of other people. And then, when you finish the message, they come across you, you got them, you got them, you got it, you got them. But you didn't get him or her. He's talking about other people. My friend, you should say, you got me. You 
because that's what I was going to do in those days. The man caught me. The preacher caught me. So, here we are. God in heaven, who has known my mind over the period and what I've been agreeing with him. All of us were thinking that jubilation would come from the political arena. But jubilation is going to come. Are you there? Leave that one alone. Because... Uh, you can look for the law from for the law from the east. It comes from the southwest. Am I right? Now it's giving us jubilation through some other route. But the jubilation we're expecting will surely happen. And I tell you something. Enabling environment. Enabling resources. Enabling status non negotiable Nigeria is a base it's a base of the thing that the Lord has planned to do in the world this place is what a base and you will give the necessary enabling environment in this place you will live to see it enabling environment so that I can move from here to Sokoto and not be looking at the back. Are you there? And then even if there is any danger, now he will give enabling status that will now take care of the danger. Are you there? Enabling status that he gave to Paul, who used to be Saul of Tarsus. And then Agabus came by prophecy of the Holy Spirit and tied with the girdle of Paul and tied his hands. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the man that owns this girdle, so they will do to him in Jerusalem. And the brethren said, Hey, 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 well, I'm all. And then they said, discouraged me, said, what mean you to weep and to break my heart? I have a enabling status. I want to die in Jerusalem. And he went there. He was empowered to go there. If the situation remains like this, toxic, he will give us enabling status that as we are going, all enemies will be slopping left, right, and center. Listen to me. See, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not kidding here. God is the owner of the, the airways. God is the owner of the railways. God is the owner of the highways, the pathways, the waterways. Do you know that God has leprosy? He has chicken pox. Do you know that God has premature death? Yes, sir. Do you know that God has celestial maggots yes, sir. that eat somebody alive? Yes, sir. God, are you there? Yes, sir. Now it can empower us in such a way, in such a way that somebody stands in the way and what he sees he takes. Yes. yes Jesus was talking. See, Talking. And then they say, What nonsense is this? What nonsense is this? Oh, yeah, come. Come, come out. They pushed him. Now, I know the place where they wanted to push him down. If you are entering Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, Eh? If you are entering Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, as you are entering and you are ascending, Jerusalem is 720 meters above sea level. Tel Aviv is down, 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 and you are coming from the north or so. And then you are entering, and then you begin to climb. Listen to me. There is this 
descent on the left. If your vehicle misses the road and falls it, it will continue to tumble and tumble, and by the time it reaches ground, it, have, it will have been scattered. The way you will describe it is the milky hill of Enuk. Are you there? If you know the milky hill. And so they pushed him so as to go to the brink, that, that is the, the mouth of the something, to push him downwards. You know what happened? He stopped. And all the people that were pushing him formed a guard of honor. Formed a guard of honor. At this army, guard of honor. And he walked past them and went his way. He never blamed status. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> man, pass man. God, if he doesn't give enabling environment, he gives enabling status. And then he gives us enabling resources. You have heard how some individuals consulted Satan here in the village. And the people said, Aloysius, go to Lagos. Our officer said, Aloysius, return to Lagos. The danger is this place. I said, I'm not returning to Lagos. God will take care of the something. Eventually, God took the people away. And the place where they were fellowship with Satan, that is where we are fellowship with God. In the very arena. Hey, this is fantastic. God gave the enabling environment. Shouldn't somebody think about it and the thing blows your head? Your head should be blown by faith. I don't mean to say that uh, you will become uh, crazy. I mean you are filled to the brim that you are saying, okay, I understand. And I, I suppose that somebody understands what I'm saying. Now, so let's now go to prayer. Praise the Lord. Let's go to prayer. Jubilation. Jubilation. We make me not to believe Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O God. And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his star desire and hast not withhold him the request of his lips, seller. He asked life of thee, and thou givest it to him, even late of days, that runneth into forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hath thou led upon his head. Who will make me not to believe what was shown me January 2004 and confirmed from another person that I didn't talk with in July the same year? God is not a madman. Jubilation is already with me. Jubilation. Jubilation. Jubilation is coming my way. Jubilation. Gently is coming my way. Jubilation. Give me the song. Jubilation. Jubilation is coming my way. Jubilation. Oh yeah. Jubilation. Jubilation is coming your way. Jubilation. Simple music. Jubilation. Low mess, no music. Jubilation is coming my way. Jubilation. Oh, yes. Jubilation. Jubilation is coming my way. Jubilation. Oh yes, jubilation, jubilation is coming my way, jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming my way, 
jubilation oh yeah jubilation jubilation is coming my way jubilation oh yeah jubilation jubilation is coming my way jubilation Jubilation, jubilation is coming away. Review the things that you have heard. Every manner of biblical experience. How that God has non negotiably packaged restoration, jubilation, and praise, and how that he has mobilized and made his agents, the non terrestrial. servants from among the innumerable company of angels. The twofold unfailing executors of his mind and his terrestrial servants ministers and still was of the mysteries and the plain things of the kingdom. In order to achieve that, which had been predetermined, what you to do, what you need to do to sanctify yourself. Put off the things that you need to put off as you've been enjoying. Switch off the phones. Separate yourself. Stay more in the house, in this house, than in the hostel. Browse the world. Shut and phone. The thought heavens. By so doing, you make yourself qualify for the things that will make jubilation to erupt like a volcanic eruption. Who is there and willing to keep the rule of the game? Had been shown. Let that person pray. Who is willing to keep the rule of the game? Let that person pray. Let the person say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Consider yourself sick, and then the doctor said, switch off your phone, don't answer any calls, and don't, don't call anything. Consider yourself at work. Let it be that if there is anything that will make you do those things, there must be things that are acceptable, things that are necessary. Hallelujah. Ooh, Lord, 
the sword. The spirit of God is moving. All over this world, as the prophet said it should be. Oh, all over this world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. If anybody agrees with what I have said, you can make yourself close to the pulpit as we pray together. If you agree to what you have heard, you agree with what you have heard and you are saying, I agree with what you have said. You come closer to this man, to the altar of many colors, so that we can pray together. If you agree with what you have heard. Thank you, Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're in your presence, O God. We have come to Bethel again with a broken heart and a surrendered mind. Oh Lord, see me again. And oh, broke the broke to pray dead. Oh Lord, see me again. In your presence, oh God. We have come to Bethel again with a broken heart and a surrendered mind. O oh Lord, see us again. Thank you, Lord. O oh Lord, see us again in your presence, O oh God. We have come to Bethel again with a broken heart and a surrendered mind. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, see us again. O oh Lord, see us again. We are in presence, O oh Lord, we have come to Bethel again with a broken heart and a surrendered mind. O oh Lord, see us again. Everybody to be quiet and just considering what you are hearing. If you want to sing it, sing it in your mind, in your mind. 
While I sing it, you can join me in your mind. Think about what is being stated. again. We are in your presence, O oh Lord. We have come to battle again. With a broken heart and a surrendered mind. Oh Lord, see us again. Oh Lord, see us again. care for me. Jesus care for me. Jesus care for me. Jesus care for me. Jesus care for us. Jesus care for us. Jesus care for us. Jesus care for me. Jesus care for you. Everywhere where you are, and hearing the voice of the man, hearing the voice of the man of God, Jesus care for you everywhere. Jesus care for you. Jesus care for you. Jesus care for you. Jesus care for you. Jesus care for me. Jesus care for me. 
Jesus cared for me. Jesus cared for me. Jesus cared for me. Somebody has a testimony. Somebody must testify. Somebody must testify. No boot here. Somebody must testify. Somebody must testify. Somebody must testify. Saying Jesus care for me. Somebody must testify. People must testify. Somebody must testify. Roses must testify. Carlos must testify. James must testify. Joseph must testify. Matthew must testify. Somebody 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 must testify. Could you do proof here? Somebody must testify. Somebody must testify. Somebody must testify. Testify everywhere. Testify everywhere. Every location of the watchman. Somebody must testify. People must testify. Kalu Bruzi there. People must testify. People must testify. No brain is a little breeze. Can I pray this to the sage there? Going to do a strange thing. The Lord is asking me to do a strange thing. I want you to pay attention. The Lord is urging me to do a strange thing. Pay attention. Pay attention, all of you whose names begin with the letter A, raise your hand. Your name begins with A, A, and then B, and then C, and then D, and then E, and F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, U, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Can I ask, is there anybody that's not covered? Is there anybody that's not covered? Wherever they, they are listening to the voice of the man, is there anybody that is not covered? There is nobody that is, that is, not, there is nobody that is not covered. I'm sure everybody has a name that begins with one of the alphabets. I'm going to pray that miracle will happen. Even to the A's and to the B's and to the C's and to the D's and to the E's. That what the Lord is making me to do in jubilation time. This is a man of God. That's what the God wants him to do. And I do it and wait and I see the things happen. Lord, for the A's, let the miracle happen. Lord, for the B's, let the miracle happen. Lord, for the C's, let the miracle happen. For the D's, let the miracle happen. For the E's, let the miracle happen. For the F's, let the miracle happen. For the G, let the miracle happen. The H, let the miracle happen. I, let the miracle happen. J, let the miracle happen. The K, let the miracle happen. The F's, let the miracle happen. The M, let the miracle happen. The N, let the miracle happen. The O's, let the miracle happen. The P, let the miracle happen. The Q, let the miracle happen. The R, let the miracle happen. The S, let the miracle happen. The T, let the miracle happen. U, let the miracle happen. X, Y, the miracle happen. W, let the miracle happen. Z, let the miracle happen. Y, let the miracle happen. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. 
there may be jubilation in the camp of the watchman. That is what has been arranged. That's what has been arranged. Oh God, that's what has been arranged. That's what has been decreed. And that which has been decreed, the thing is gone out. And the word is gone out. Thou has said jubilation is coming. I didn't say it. Thou hast said it, you know how to bring it to pass, how to make it to happen. Thou hast said it, and you don't withdraw your word. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I stand to receive the testimonies. Blessed Redeemer from everywhere. The writing to say, they tell me the things happening, even right now. As they get away from this place, my Father, my God, the friend that came with, they don't come with them again. The next session, they shall not come with the thing that toppled them in times past. They shall not come with them again in the next session. Precious Father, as they retire, they come back to the next session. And they don't come with those things again. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the King. Where the word of the King is, there is power. Preclotto says a sereke. Preclotto says a sereke. So say. Compriso lo venate. Compriso na zola ke kuse. Clubes li chose. Clubes li si chose. Clubes li si so chase se. Clubes li si so se. Clubes li si so se. Preclotto so se se. Pana lo vevere le lo. Oh, see us every time. See what is happening in Canada. See what is happening in America. See what is happening in Britain. See what is happening in Italy. See what is happening in Ukraine. See what is happening in Israel. See what is happening everywhere. You see every time. Happening in Nigeria, in Ghana, in all Africa, all the nations of the world that are represented where your children are operating. This is the day of jubilation. All the things that are in the West, all the things that are in the West are moving in the West, are moving in the body. I command you now to give way to rive, fall out, fall out, fall out, fall out, fall out. All the things that are becoming a heavy load upon the minds, fall out, fall out. Fall out of their minds, fall out of their heads, fall out of their brains, fall out of their testines, fall out of their nerves. All the nervous disorders, all the nervous disorders be amended in the name of Jesus. Cruising in Levreni closet, switch off your phones. If you must make phone call, it must be something that God will give a good mark. We say, yes, I allow you. As you go, they give you a chance to go and sleep. Lie down and sleep. Don't go to talk and talk away your strength. Lie down and do what? And sleep. And come back here and hear again and pray again. 
and then go back and lie down and sleep and come back again. By the time we are through, By the time we are through, I tell you what you'll be like. You know the clay pot, the potter moves it, eh? the clay pot, after preparing, molding it, goes to put it and put fire. And the thing burns and burns and burns and burns. Gang, 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 gang. And you know what? Game, 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 game. And then, if you put water, it will not leak out. That is what we came for. How did we build that kind of, that kind of awareness? How did we build it? This is what I want to build. Listen to me. God gave me somebody to marry. And then I told the pastor. And the pastor told me to tell the person. And then eventually the person prayed and agreed. And the father said, over my dead body. And the father was a very hard man. Was a seaman. You cannot marry my daughter. You know the prayer I prayed? Oh God, have mercy. Oh God. Oh God. I didn't pray such a prayer. You know what I said? Lord, that was my prayer. I will know you and Ephion. You too, Ephion. That was his name. I will know who is stronger. That's all. That's all. That's the prayer I made. All the time. And one year passed, he didn't give in. Two years passed, he didn't give in. Three years passed, he didn't give in. The fourth year, I couldn't say, you, Utu Efion, and you, God, I will know who is stronger. That was my prayer. And then, you know what broke him to pieces? His daughter came, when he came from sea, and said, Daddy, you said that I will not marry that man. He said, yes. He said, Okay. Look to me, eyeball to eyeball. And the father was looking at her, eyeball to eyeball. He said, I will not marry another person in this life. From today, you are my husband. <laughs> and the man said, no be like that. Go and bring the man. That's the end. <laughs> That's all. And then, melted him, and he remained melted. You come to my house, be weeping. The prayer is, Lord, you and this man, I will know who is stronger. I didn't come from heaven. We were built. That's what I'm trying to do. I didn't fall from heaven. That's what I'm trying to do. And it must be done. I said it must be done. Yeah. Got to be done. We are in a very bad times. And we need rugged Christian people. Am I right? Yeah. We need rugged Christian people. He said, come with Jesus. <laughs> that is heads that never die. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to build. I want you to take note of it. And so when you come back, come running, come praying, come saying jubilation is my Lord. Are you there? Switch off the phones. Tell yourself I'm in business. So no phones. I'm at work. I'm in the kitchen. You make phone calls in the kitchen. Want the gas explosion to kill you. We are in the kitchen. We were cooking food. 
Now, it's going to be a time in the, in the meeting when I will ask you to come with your phones and you will open your phones and you will place call to anybody that you want a miracle to happen to. Are you there? The Lord has made me already to articulate it. I'm announcing to you. A time is coming. I will ask you to bring your phone and at a point, appointed time, you open your phone and call somebody and then say, Pastor wants to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking for a situation where at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when somebody is going away from the places where they gathered, all over, all over the washman locations, the person is going out and is saying, going majestically. And not, not in arrogance. But he's going and saying, and saying, where is the, see, we do like we did. In my day, when we build up, that my prayer is, Lord, I want trouble to come. You think I'm joking? I said, my madness included asking the Lord to bring trouble. I want what? Trouble. Now, what I will tell him, because in the midst of trouble, I know you. They don't know you when everything is rosy. It's not madness. But it worked. 50 years of foolishness. Jesus, I remain foolish till 120 years. <laughs> did, did you? You think, you think that what I'm saying is not written in the scripture. That's what you're saying. It's written in the scriptures. It's written in the scriptures. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you where it's written. The foolishness that we're practicing is written. <laughs> Praise God. I show it. You just listen. So that you don't think what kind of preaching is this. Does it have a scriptural verse to, to, <laughs> to confirm it? That's what I want to show. Hallelujah. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1. From verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? And not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. He pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. His wisdom is so fantastic, so immeasurable. And then, because of that, he now sees that these people that are looking for wisdom... He said, well, they want wisdom, so I will not save them by wisdom. I will save them by foolishness. I will walk with them that are stupid, that are senseless, who believe in me. Is it not senselessness? What we did, we believed in him. And then he turned the wisdom, the prudence of my colleagues, who were wise, who said, what are you people doing? 
when I returned to, to my home from Menugu, packed my bag and baggage and all my property and put it in a bus and returned home, and people were saying, what a crazy person. This person has gone. You leave company car and company driver and all the money, and you come home and say you are going to Lagos. Was it not stupidity? That you were having company car and driver and you went to Lagos to squat in a two-room apartment and you were jumping from bus to bus. Is it not stupidity? But is that stupidity that made you to become washman? Yeah. It is that stupidity, that stupidity, that, that foolishness that betted the washman and made you to become saved. So I will play that stupidity. Carry on. I will carry on with that stupidity until you land me to heaven. You are understanding the message a little. <laughs> Praise God. I need to let you go so that you can go and relax. Just what? Relax. In the course of the program, I will tell you how to manage your mind. The message is think right, talk right, act right, eat right, live right, live real. Think right, act right, talk right. Think right, speak right, act right, react right, eat right, live real, live right, and then live real. The only person that is living real, real life, is he that is thinking right, and is talking right, and is acting right, and is reacting right, and is eating right. Otherwise, you are not living. Many people here, what is what I finish you is the load that you put on your mind. When you come back, the message that is going to come from me is titled first message that is going to come is titled praying properly. You thought that you have been praying. You thought that you have been praying. I know some people here. Lord, thank you very much. My mother is disturbing me. <laughs> thank you very much. The next thing is, my mother is disturbing me. My uncle did not pay my school fees. Oh, he knew. A prayer. You are not praying. You are complaining. You are making argument against your mother and against your colleagues. Lord, thank you very much. The pastor did not call me on phone. And then I was sick. He didn't visit me. I don't understand this kind of work. I don't understand this kind of church. Is it how it happens in this world? This is not the way Jesus Christ did it. I don't understand. And you think you are praying. You are just, you are just complaining. You are not praying. I'm going to talk about praying properly. Because over the period, because of the troubles that we have, Feeling us. You come to prayer and you are complaining. That's what is happening. The next moment you burst into crying. God is not sentimental. Praying properly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Let me leave you there. Why well, now there's something that you should come with the expectation. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and let's do the round, the final round. Wherever you are, precious Father, look at all the children in the house. Lord, look from heaven. <laughs> look from heaven, from your throne, and look down onto the children of men that are in your house. Lord, and let this that has been stated concerning you play out even this afternoon.
precious fire. And what is it, Lord, that I'm asking that it should play out? It is as follows. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So let your eye run to and fro in the whole earth where these people are found and show yourself strong on each person's behalf. This is my prayer and this is what I believe, Lord. In Jesus' name. Somebody that believes and says, I got it, I say, Amen.